Hi guys, all right, so here's what happened. I made that video last time, and then it confused Liz and Matthew, and now, and then I like told them about other things, and it was like a whole situation, and so now I am making a fresh video, I, okay. Then, after that, I went and I made a fresh video to like fill in some of the gaps. And then I realized that if I didn't give you that information when you started from the beginning, it would all be just very confusing and not helpful. So I am making a new, fresh start, clean video from the beginning on how to convert these drafting files that you get as AutoCAD files into Vectorworks files. It's going to be great, and this way I can do all of the steps in order. So step one will be go to Schoology, your friend and mine. Oh my gosh, it's like the matrix here. I have a, I have a video of a video happening, but if I go into block eight for this class, file setup converting from 2D AutoCAD. So I have a new template file for you as of today. You should download that shit and then you should go into Vectorworks and save it as a template. Um, I will do that in a moment. You should also download this XSEC DWG and XPlan DWG, okay? Um, this theater setting up Vectorworks 3D theater video will be gone um, and it will be replaced with the video I'm creating right now, which will suck much less. So here we go. Um, so let's assume we've downloaded all of these things. Great. Um, opening Vectorworks is the next step. And where? Here's Vectorworks. It's already open. Um, let's delete a bunch of stuff. No, I don't need to save these changes because I'm fixing my life um, from the beginning. Bye! No, don't save the changes. It's all wrong. Okay, so I'm going to go into file. I'm going to open. Um, and I want to open the new template, CSR's template 10719. That's today. Open. Great. Then I need to save this as a template file, which is how we ended up having that CSR's template to begin with. So file, save as template. Then over here, I'm going to call it October CSR's template because I already did this once. I'm doing it again. I can just select it, overwrite it. Um, if you want to, you can just click CSR's template and overwrite your previous CSR's template. Also fine. Um, I'm naming it a new thing just so I know that I did it. I want to replace it. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Okay. So now when I go to create a new document, I will be able to start with that fresh template. Here I am. Okay. Um, next thing I want to do is bring in that XSEC section view and XPlan file um, from the DWG file. So that means I need to go to import. Import. I'm going to import them individually, right, which is different from last time. I'm going to start with the X the xplan.dwg file. Open. Okay. Using inches. Great. That's what I want it to do. Active settings. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. It's going to do this mapping colors to line weights. That's all fine. We'll just let it do what it's doing. Okay. The, ex the import succeeded. Awesome. Here it is. Um, first thing I'm going to do is make sure it's in the correct style. So if I go to edit, Here's the problem, okay? This is a problem we were having with this file before. The scale that it came in at is 1 to 50, which is an engineering scale. And the scale that I actually want it in is 1 to 48, which is quarter inch scale and what the rest of my drawing is in. So to get to that window, I right clicked on X plan in the design layers and I went to edit. And now to change the scale, I just click on this button that says scale and I click on one quarter inch, it changes the paper scale to 48, and then I click OK, and then I click OK. There it is. Um, you'll notice when I brought it in as a single DWG, some things that I would have thought would be there are hiding. If you come over here, um, you can turn on things like catwalks, and then they will appear, um, and text, and it will appear. So those were two hidden layers that came in hidden. Um, so when Liz opened it up and it didn't have those things, that was a little confusing, but now we got it back. We're good. Um, the other thing I want to do, first off, is flip this whole thing around so that the stage is at the top of the page. That's going to make it easier for me to know what I'm doing. Control A selects all, um, and then I can group it. Control G, now it's one giant block of object, and I can grab my rotate tool and flip it over 180 degrees. All right, so now what this will mean is that when I go to like look at the stage, 
the stage will be up there at the top of my page and life will feel a lot more normal. Okay, back to top plan, which I can also get to with control or alt five. Is that true? No, not alt five, control five, top plan. Yeah, control five, top plan. Okay, so now I wanna bring in my section view. I'm gonna use my section view to um, measure so that I know what it is all supposed to look like, right? Um, if you look at this drawing, you're gonna see some different things. I'm gonna get there in a second. I'm gonna go pull in this section view and it's gonna show me all of the sectional, like how tall walls are, all of that kind of information. So to do that, I will import another single DWG, the X sec DWG, okay. It's gonna bring it all in. I'm gonna let it just do what it's doing. I'm gonna say done. Okay, so there's my section view. Great, okay. So it's gonna come in on its own design layer. Let me just give it a second to catch up. Great, um, and then I'm gonna move this so that it's not overlapping my other drawing. And if I wanted to group it, this would be the time, control G. Um, so what that's doing for me now, it's giving me this reference. It's gonna have that same issue where the scale is not quite right. Um, and so when you're not on that layer, you won't be able to snap to it. So I'm gonna right click, edit, and change the scale to one quarter inch scale. And now it will be much, much happier, okay? Um, so now this is all gonna make a lot more sense. Um, the next thing we do when we're creating a document um, that we can then use as our file, right? As our base theater file to draft a set on. Um, I'm gonna grab these two layers, I'm gonna pull them down to the bottom because we're gonna be drafting things up on top of them. Um, the theater floor plan layer is the one I'm gonna work on first. And I want it to gray snap others so that I can snap to places on this theater floor plan as I draft the theater floor plan on top of it. Um, and I'm gonna pick up my wall tool and first thing I'm gonna do is trace the walls, the outside walls of this theater. Um, if I come in here to the little house, building shell, looks like a little house, there's this tool called the wall tool. You can get to it by pressing the number nine. When I click on the wall tool, um, I have some options. If you look up here, this guy is polygon mode. That's the mode I want. That's gonna let me sort of trace the wall as I go. Um, and then I'm gonna switch to exterior wall 11 inches, okay? This is a wall style that I made for you. And what a wall style is gonna do is um, it's going to already set up your wall to be 11 inches thick, which is what these outside walls look like they are. And it's also going to give it a crosshatch so that it looks like an exterior wall when you're drafting it. Um, and it'll come out looking correct on your final plate. So I have a couple of different control line modes. If you look up here, these are all different ways that you are drawing your wall. And we're gonna start with this left control line mode. That means if I draw a line, it is the left side of the wall that's being created, right? Do, 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 do. There's a weird building that is not real. Um, so that means I wanna start on the left side or the left side line, right, of the wall that I'm drafting. So I'm gonna just find this interior wall because the inside is what I care about the most and I'm just gonna trace it and it's pretty close to the right width. It's not perfect, but it's not a big deal if it's not perfect. As long as the inside dimensions match up, um, you're good because the inside dimensions are gonna be where you're drafting your scenery. So if I hold shift, make it vertical, even though it's a little weird, and there's like some, probably some zigzagging that happens inside. This is close enough to be accurate for this drawing. Okay, ooh, delete, delete. Okay, so if I hold shift, and then I can just double click, right? And now that wall, it made a little bend, that's okay. We can come back and clean that up later. Um, then the next wall I'm gonna draft is gonna be starting from the other side and coming to meet this wall, because I have a corner here. So if I do that, I'm doing a circus song now. Okay, like this. Now I have that wall in place. 
Um, I can do the same thing down here, right? I can take this wall and come across to snap to this point right here. See how I do that highlight thing? Now I'll have a, a line I can match to and I can come all the way up here and bring it all into this one giant rectangle, okay? Um, I just randomly added a wall down here. This is the lobby, so the actual wall is further away, but we're not gonna need it in order to do this drafting, okay? Um, so those are my exterior walls. My interior walls are a little thinner. Um, they're just the backs of the theater over here. So when I go to trace these, um, I might use a, a less thick wall line, um, and I can get to that. When I pick up my wall tool, I can switch to eight inches instead of, instead of the 11, and I can zoom in here because um, again, I care about this inside line, right? And I can snap right like that, and then clickety clickety, right? I can uh, draw in this wall situation. Okay, the next spot that I want is right here. And then, well, that's a little different now, isn't it? Um, I find if I don't like the way that something is lining up, you can hit delete and it'll step back a point as you're drawing. Um, so we're gonna call that that wall. If I wanted to add this wall, I could do a little bit of a thing and, and then you can do, you know, whatever to sort of finish it off. If you want that, that's available to you. Um, these walls matter a lot less because I'm just undo that um, because this is outside of the room, right? I care the most about what's happening in the room. I do need to go back now and add my doors. And to do that, I'm gonna use the door tool. So the door tool will plop a door into an existing wall. Plop, right? As you move after the first click, which attaches it to the wall, the second click is gonna show you which way the door swings. Click, click, there it is, okay? She's three feet wide, she's six foot eight tall, her top size is square. Um, if you want a double door, like back here, this is a double door that's opening in a strange way, you still click in the center, you still open in the direction that you want. Make your width twice as wide, six feet, okay? Uh, this one is even a bigger door than that because it's a loading door, so maybe it's seven feet, right? I wanna get until it gets out there. Maybe it's eight feet. Yeah, it's eight feet, okay? It's a loading door. Um, but it's not opening all on one side like that. It's opening as a double door. So if I slide down to configuration right here, I can switch this to a swing by part, and now it has the two doors. Um, oh no, I don't want that kind of unequal length. It wants me to save it, but I'll come back to that. Um, there probably is a way to make this hinge all the way open. I don't know what it is and I'm not super worried about it. So I'm gonna just not do that. Um, my next door is just a regular three foot door again and it will automatically go back to that mode as you draft. Um, and then you can just plop your doors into the openings, okay? Line them up with what you got. This door goes right here and it swings that way. Um, this door goes right here, and it swings this way, okay? So set your doors in, okay? Once you've done that, um, I'm gonna have you draft the theater floor. Um, we also are gonna need to measure the height, because right now it's a very short theater and that's not reality. So, you know, I just went shift C to flyover mode and I'm like, ooh, this is a very short theater. That's not real. Um, control five, takes me back to top plan view. Um, I can now go in, select my walls, and change the height of them to be reality, reality feet high. Um, and I can measure that height right here, okay? I can be like, oh, it's this tall to the ceiling from the floor in this, in this section view, right? Let's measure it and see how much tallness it is. So if I come in here, grab my constrained linear dimensions, and point to the floor. 27 foot six is how tall that wall is, actually. Um, 
So now if I come back over to these guys, I can make them all that height. Okay, so now it's as tall as it is in reality, which is a lot taller than it was before. Um, that is the basic strategy. After that, you can trace your shape of your stage floor. Um, we, we'll talk about the house seating a little bit later, so don't worry about that right now, and don't worry about any of this other sidewall business or the catwalks, because that'll be something that we look at later. Um, the catwalk height is, as a scenic designer, the height that you're looking for, but again, it's not a big deal right now. Um, so we're just gonna get those walls in um, and the rest of the doors in place. Um, and then if you would draw the stage floor, that would be excellent. That's gonna be the steps that I need done on this video. Great, um, I will talk to you